Everyone has a story. Mine is simple. I'm Candace Dixon, a food blogger and cocktail enthusiast. Bartenders not only have fascinating stories, but they seem to serve a greater purpose behind the bar. Do you know what? I actually kept him out of jail that night. I'm on a quest in New York City to look into their world and quench my thirst for the most outrageous stories to be told. So yeah, that was probably definitely one of the craziest things that's ever happened to me in the bar. So, what's your story? Hey, today we're in New York City's Greenwich Village, visiting Tom, the bar manager at Pig Bleaker. This inviting barbecue spot has refined and hearty dishes and killer cocktails. Tom will share some stories like how he's developed a keen eye for shady characters looking for a swig. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's take a peek into his world. Hey Tom. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Welcome. Thank you so much. So I hear that Pig Bleaker has a new happy hour menu and you guys have a great selection of like mezcal, tequila and whiskey drinks, mm -hmm. which are all my favorite. So can you recommend something? Yeah, sure. So one of my favorite drinks on the list, one of the best representations of what we do here, is a great drink called the Montgomery Old Fashioned. Okay. So it's a Scotch Old Fashioned with orange curacao and chocolate bitters. Wow. Yeah, it's the idea behind the drink was to create something different for old fashioned and whiskey drinkers and to introduce people to scotch cocktails, okay? Um, and the name is uh, influenced by the Clan Montgomery from uh, the lowlands of Scotland from around the 12th century onwards. Um, but the Montgomery itself, the name is actually French in origin, so it's a nod towards the two major ingredients, which are scotch whiskey and orange curacao. Fantastic. Well, one Montgomery old fashioned. All right, you got it. So we're going to make the Montgomery old fashioned. We're going to start off with a couple of dashes of chocolate bitters. Um, we're going to use half an ounce of orange curacao and then the meat of the drink, two and a quarter ounces of scotch. We're going to take a big chunk of ice. We're going to chip away the edges. The great thing about this ice is that it, it tends to be bigger than the glass, so then we can cut it down to size. I'm going to lower it into the glass. If you find that the ice isn't quite fit, just tilt it and give it a bit of a stir. And then the cherry on top, metaphorically, is a nice, long orange peel. And that is the Montgomery Old Fashioned. Cheers. Tom, how long have you been bartending overall? Um, probably about 10 years. I'm sure that you've collected some pretty good stories along the way. So do you have anything that might be memorable or impactful? Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting because sometimes, uh, sometimes during service, mm -hmm. especially the older I get and more I've been in the business, there are some, there's some things I'll be subjected to where I'll just go into autopilot and I'll just be like, okay, sure whatever kind of thing. But then, then there are other things that kind of stick out in my mind, especially during my uh, earlier and more formative years. I remember uh, when I first started out bartending, I think I must have been doing it only for about four years, something like that. One of the bars I was working in, uh, it, was, uh, it was generally run by two people during the week. And um, I was working with my boss at the time and we had this guy come in um, in the middle of service. It was fairly quiet, it was fairly mellow, it was the beginning of the shift. And he took out like a bunch of drug paraphernalia from his pockets and... Excuse me? Right, right. He put, put it all on the bar, like tobacco and uh, cigarette papers and some other things as well. He was um, organized. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, he wanted to get his setup in place. Um, you could say that. And. He, you know, he was a little bit sketchy, didn't look us in the eye, his communication wasn't fantastic and he was, you know, kind of like looking around and mumbling to himself and he just, <clears throat> out of nowhere, just started uh, skinning up um, a reefer on the bar. Are you uh, serious? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And me, me and my boss just kind of looked at each other. Um, he went round like the other side of the guy and ended up taking care of the tables and the guests that we had in the bar, so he just kind of carried on with his job and, and left me, <coughs> left, <laughs> left me to deal with him. And I thought, well, he ain't, he ain't gonna go, he ain't gonna go away anytime soon, right? 
Okay. And he looks like the kind of individual that if startled or confronted could, something quite, potentially quite violent could happen. Um, or something very uh, unpredictable, shall we say. So <clears throat> I put down a glass of water and I went nearer to him. Um, opened up my body and my body language in a non-threatening way and just kind of spoke to him sporadically. He was just like, hey, how you doing? Let me know if you need anything. Here's some water for you. And um, <clears throat> he went to the bathroom a couple of times, drank some water, didn't order a drink. It was just kind of like, you know, it, 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 he looked like a very unhinged uh, individual and there wasn't really anything we could do about it other than make him feel quite comfortable and accommodate him and, and be hospitable to him while he was in the bar. Well, that's quite, um, I guess, uh, considerate. <clears throat> uh, did he seem uh, normal or... Nope. <laughs> like, <laughs> what was his body language when you approached I, him? I mean, he was, just, he, was just, he was fairly close. You know, he was clearly wanting to get some kind of fix. Um, and after a while, he, he ended up taking his, um, his drug construction, whatever you want to call it. He left a bunch of mess on the bar, which was fine. We just cleared it up. <laughs> but my boss, my boss made a point afterwards. He was said, you know, there's been situations where I've been in similar to that. And he was like, people that I worked under would have just taken the cheapest bottle of vodka and then just smashed it on the other side of the bar. Because at the end of the day, if, if this guy is here and he might create a scene, then you would rather you would rather scare him off um, and have it just cost you know like 10 pounds or 15 pounds of the cheap bottle of vodka than have anything else escalate which might have an impact on either the environment or the atmosphere or the guests Absolutely. and what it is that they're paying for in in that space so i said well i'm kind of glad that we didn't do that and i'm just kind of glad that we took care of the situation that he was on his way i would have voted for the smash bottle of vodka i'm just saying that would have yeah, been fun. I, th I think I think he he was a lot closer to that than I was. Put it that way. So you've never you never saw that guy before. Did he ever come back? Nope, nope, nope. Wow. No. Thank you so much. This has been a pleasure. Thank you. Um, chatting with you, and I look forward to trying the brunch pretty soon mm -hmm. and the happy hours yeah. and live it up at Pig Bleaker. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you here. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs>